Mm. Just extra chargers. The seed was planted on my drive home from facing friends in a 250 mile event. At this point, I had two multi-day trail races under my belt and was inspired and eager to continue to test my limits. Ultra running, it's a fun game we play. Beyond this, I view running as a method of living fully, the ultimate creative pairing of the brain and body. This is why I run. There are memories in this wilderness, 10 years of skiing with family, ski instructing at Bolton and Stowe, my first trail race. Now, years later, I was looking forward to reconnecting the landscapes that were the backdrop for so many of these memories and the people whose paths had crossed mine at one time or another. And while this would be a fun adventure, there are risks. Leaving a stable life in beautiful Redondo Beach, California to move into a van with my husband and our two cats and heading to Vermont for eight weeks to train on the trail. And I had to consider that no matter how hard I trained, nothing in this sport, nor mother nature, is ever guaranteed. In every moment that summer, right up to starting at the Northern Terminus, I had to choose risk over regret. I think quickly though, we started to realize that there were going to be things in my plan that weren't going to go as planned. I think we were all just a little anxious. She took off fast, dropped her pacer, got to the first road crossing where we had her first like supply pickup. She got there before we even got to the bottom of the yeah, start. I told them to slow down. I mean, she's, she's kind ahead of, like, of pace. Excited. She needs to just kind of calm down. Yeah. It's like, She's just ready to go. She just needs to kind of back up a little bit. But yeah. yeah, I think we're good. Like she's ahead of pace. She's crushing and she's like, she's moving fast. Woo! Hey, 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 so yeah, kind of a wild 11 miles. Woo! Oh, you got the space bones in, ready to party. I always saw this project as a party. Yes, it's a race against the clock. Yes, it's going to get tough. But this was a celebration of all of the hard work banked during training. If you could just recap for me the section that you okay. just went through with Shelby. It was kind of hard for her to eat, like for the first, I'd say hour and a half. Like I would check in, she's like, Okay, I just ate 40 calories. I'm like, okay, well, we need to eat more. So, but then she started eating more, ate some salt tablets, and then she was like moving. And then sometimes we were moving a little slow. And so we were like, okay, we're not gonna talk for 10 minutes and we're just gonna move. And she kept saying, okay, I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna turn it on. So it became a thing where we're like, okay, turn it on. And then we would not talk and we'd do a little focus 10. So that was working. If you know trail running, you know that it's a team sport. My pacers and crew came from all over. Old fitness friends from my favorite Vermont gyms. This is who I want, caffeine. Friends of friends Sweet. that I had met on previous summits. Cresting the summit of Larway Mountain. Woo! Ski buddies who knew me from before I discovered running, but understand the magic of bombing down hills and swerving through trees. They were awesome. This is where we're entering in our world. Yeah, it's about to get an R. Woo! Running into a trailhead transition and seeing old and new friends mingle brought me so much joy. The moments we had together, burgers in the back of a van, taking a day to eat a breakfast sandwich, getting fed mashed potatoes from a Ziploc bag, 
awkward concrete massages, farting endlessly. This is the chaos of a family. And that's how I like to party. She came out with a big goal of getting the, like the overall FKT, which was a great goal, but she started to like short her rest stops, her breaks, and maybe not taking as much nutrition. And like last night was, was like touch and go. Like, is she gonna make it? And then she got back, we had like a real talk. She had a real sleep, took a lot of calories in, and like, just like that, turn around. This last section, she was really running. She feels great. Right now, she's on pace to get the FKT. And if she does what she's doing now, she'll, she'll definitely get it. But she has to be honest with herself and the crew, like, I need to sleep now. Like, I don't need to push on to the next section, you know, six hours from now to be shot. So when we get to Lincoln, we'll do our two hour rest, get 90 minutes sleep, 30 minutes eating. And yeah, she's positive now, she's stoked. She knows what she was doing wrong and she's like, she's on point. So I'm feeling super confident and like she has great legs right now, so. That was a good fact. Yeah. Oh. Nice job, y'all. Come sit down. All right. Stop put your feet up. Yeah. You get a good little sleep. Yeah. Scott's on his way. We'll get a sleep, get a rest. How'd that feel? Good. Nice work. Yeah, we gotta do some feet taping and cleaning, but well, um, we're yeah, good. Let's get the shoes off. We'll take it to the bedroom and do it all up. Yeah, as long as I keep feeding, like yeah, I'm gonna keep down. moving. That's what I'm saying. Well, like, fast. Hype spikes aren't necessarily a good thing, but they feel good. And after running for two or three days, this is exactly what you need. But it's a risk. If you're running for 120 hours, you don't want to burn all of your matches too soon. Because hype spikes are a great way to burn your matches fast. And I look back and wonder, did some of those matches burn too bright too oh. soon? She's <laughs> such a beast. It's like, oh my god. I'm just like blown away by the level of fitness. It's like insane. get her up this hill, but we right. need to kind of catch up on what she just lost by sprinting here. Okay. Yeah, right. Food-wise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're so just the recovery, like shifting I think. to race mode is all. Uh, yeah, let's... There's 100 miles left. We're shifting to race mode, but like, be I'm... smart. Let's a little bit for you. Mm -hmm. you We're now racing a 100 miler. Yeah. Yep. Fuck it. Once we get the... See ya. Alright. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Watch out. Now, I hope she can get this done. What is time? Where does it go? When you're traveling 273 miles, you have a lot of time. On the other hand, the clock continues to run, whether you're running, eating, or sleeping. I had a lot of time yeah. until I had zero time. Uh, Shelby got here and just ran through. <laughs> a pace that I may or may not have been able to hold for the second half of the run. Just want to know the pace. Humor me. I was determined to hit those splits. I hated that I had already chewed up so much time. <laughs> Where did it really go? 
even months later, I can't tell you it was one thing. Maybe it was a lot of little things. And while I might have thought time was on my side, it never was. Like I trained so hard for this. Like my legs are seriously so strong. Keep your eye on the clock and accept that you can't control it. One final aid station. After this stop, I would only have two more transitions left before hitting my end point, the southern terminus on the Massachusetts border. I grabbed a puffy jacket and beanie. Wrong choice. A quarter of the way into this 22-mile section, the skies opened up. Vermont weather was determined to make sure we didn't forget it was still in control. I was dead set on charging through it, and as I did, my body became drenched to the core. And as the storm rolled by, it was at mile 249 in a shelter, shivering and dangerously soaked, that this project came to an end. Time had won this round. I love the chase. I live for the challenge. This project caused me pain, equal parts tears and laughter. It scared me. It built confidence. It was a leap into owning the course of my life, and I couldn't be happier with the trail I'm on now. The whole project, from beginning to end, was everything I hoped to get out of the experience, and then some. It wasn't easy, but if it was easy, there would be no challenge and no growth. With this, I think there was a part of me that felt a little, like, let down that I was so loud about a goal and then didn't get it. But then there's a part of me that's actually almost excited that I didn't get it because what what do you do with that? And I think that's almost more powerful than having smashed the FKT, being okay with the fact that like it didn't happen this time, but there will be next times. And just being okay with the world seeing that failure. That doesn't change who I am as an athlete or a person. It just says that I'm, I'm not afraid to put myself out there. Yeah. We did a lot of things right. Lows were low, highs were high. At the end of the day, giving your all to something, trying with your entire being, that's all you can ask of yourself. I hope you try and keep trying. I know I will. <laughs>